Yeah.
house of the Lord tonight. Amen. Amen. The rest of y'all need to come in line. We got two in agreement. Mom, sit down. We're trying to get service going. You need to start asking my I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 You love Jesus tonight? We are. Amen. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. He's the only way we can come to the Father. Amen. He's the only way you had hope and had peace in your, in your mind and your heart today. Amen. Because of Him, we are what we are. Amen. Amen. Let me give you a prayer list as we get rolling tonight. Well, first, let me make an announcement. Paul said she needs all the men that can to help stay after church so we can get our uh, tables lined up the dinner that's this coming weekend. Is that right? Yeah. Pastor's appreciation this Sunday. So um, she wants us to get that lined up. So if you're good, stay after church. We'll get that done in no time. Amen? Amen. The coat drive they said has been canceled. I don't know if they didn't have enough participants or they prayed about it and winter wasn't coming this year. So... Brother, you'd like that, wouldn't you, Brother Mike? It'd be a whole lot easier not having to wrestle in machines in 30-degree weather. Amen. So if you had your coats, I'm sure there's somebody that could use them somewhere. So if you brought them, I'm sure we could use them somewhere. Any other announcements? Going once, going twice. All right. Prayer list tonight. Ever Keen's on the list. Prayers, Nikki Hall, Angela Toller, the Cook family, Josh Morgan and Tammy Morgan on the list, Karen's mother, I believe she had fallen and needs our prayers, Maxine Bishop, Jerry Lee Klein, they got an unspoken request on here tonight. Does anybody else want to cast anything before us before we go and pray? Go ahead, Christine. some things. Uh, Sister Christine's moving to the new house so if you have some extra items, uh, I don't know what all she needs, but I'm sure if uh, you talk to her and find out maybe we could help her in some areas. Amen? You need a washer and dryer? Okay. Refrigerator, washer and dryer. Anybody else tonight in the prayer list? All right, well, let's go before our king tonight in prayer. evening for your love, your mercy, again for your goodness tonight, Father. We're thankful for the privilege we have once again to be able to come before the throne of God tonight. And Father, to be able to come in Jesus' name, knowing tonight that we can come uh, with boldness. You said that we can find grace to help in time of need. And I, I'm just so thankful tonight that we can come before you. So thankful that you made a way that we can come. So thankful tonight to know that Jesus is in the presence of God for each one of us tonight. So thankful that as we come, we come on the merits of who He is tonight, knowing that He is there in the presence for us, and knowing that He's there tonight as our high priest, there tonight as one that can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And so we're, we're thankful and grateful for that, thankful to know that we have an advocate there tonight, 
I, I, I give you praise tonight. I do so thankful, so grateful for the privilege tonight that we have together in this house. Tonight we can gather in a midweek service. We gather tonight with your people, people like Precious Faith. And Father, we're just so thankful and grateful that we have a facility that we can come to. We have a place that we can gather. And you said we're two or three are gathered together in your name. And if we would come in agreement that we, you would be among our midst. And so we're we're thankful and grateful for that tonight. We are so grateful and so thankful tonight to know that uh, that you that you have, have, have truly given us a place that we can gather in. And so thankful that we can come together tonight to worship you in spirit and in truth. And we're, we're grateful and thankful for that we are. We are. We're so thankful. Thankful today, Lord. Thankful tonight for just for the privilege to be able to call upon your name tonight. To know that we call upon one that, that I know that is able to do things seen, be abundant, be above all that we can ask or think tonight. Thankful that we serve a God that I know that, that is the Alpha and the Omega. It all begins with you and ends with you. And so we're thankful that I'm grateful that we, we serve a God that is that is not only able, but I, I know we serve a God that, that can do all things tonight. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. And I'm thankful for that. I'm grateful for that, Lord. That, and I pray that as, 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 as your sons and daughters, I, I just pray that we will realize that, that there's nothing too big for you. That there's nothing going on in our life that you don't know about. And there's nothing going on in our life that you cannot take care of and you can handle. And I, I just pray, Father, tonight for every, every individual in this house here tonight that's struggling. I, I pray, Father, for every need tonight, every burden. I pray for every every individual tonight that came here troubled and came here with 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 with, uh, with problems and came here Lord, with things going on in their life, circumstances that they cannot control, circumstances that they cannot uh, overcome on their own. I, I, I'm just believing, Lord, that they will that they will allow you to do the exceeding, the above, the above all. They will allow you to have what they cannot can, what they cannot conquer, that they cannot overcome, what they cannot. Uh, over, overdo it. I, I just pray, Father, that you will help us here tonight. Give us ears to hear tonight in this house, would you? I pray that as the song go out, the word goes out tonight, that everything that will be done here tonight will be done to glorify the name of the Lord here tonight. I pray you'll open our hearts up and open our ears up and let us let us hear what the Spirit is saying tonight to the church. I, I pray that you will uh, that you will help us, Holy Spirit. We need you. Without you tonight, it'll be just a mere social gathering. But if you'll come tonight, well, we know that. Uh, that great things can be accomplished. I just pray that we'll not leave tonight the same way we came. I just pray the Word will speak to our hearts. We'll find ourselves in the Word tonight. And we'll allow the Word to do the work in us because I know with all my heart, believe with all my heart, Lord, that we'll work the Word, the Word will work. And I just pray you'll help us tonight to be able to leave in this house, Lord, to leave here better equipped than what we came, Lord. I pray for every need on our prayer list tonight, every every spoken request tonight, every every name that went forth. We just lift to the throne room of God, believing tonight that you're the God that is able to meet their need. And we're just trusting and believing, Lord, that healing will come to those that are that are needing a physical healing. Believing, Lord, that deliverance will come to those that are uh, that are needing uh, deliverance and those that are out of this service tonight due to sickness, I pray for uh, Lord, that several call and several texts, Lord, that were sick and I just pray for the families tonight, God children that were sick tonight out of this meeting I just trust that you will divinely touch and you will divinely uh, intervene and do what only, only you can do tonight, Lord, we, we do pray. Father, we pray for our nation tonight we pray for our president, we pray for uh, the leaders of our country tonight, Father we, uh, our nation needs a divine touch of God our nation is so divided right now, and Lord, I, I just pray that Lord, I just pray that you'll raise up, continue to raise up the righteous seed. I, I pray, Father, that this nation will experience an awakening. Father, Lord, if we ever need one, we need one now. I, I, I just pray that you will help the leaders of our country, Father, that Lord, that they would, that they would, that they would hear the voice of God. That, that Lord, that the people that are in office right now, that are born again people, I pray that they'll have a voice that'll be heard. And they will stand and they will and they will have a voice in this thing. And I, I just pray, Father, for, for this nation, our community. I pray for like we pray for every church in our community, every pastor, Lord. We just pray for a mighty release of your river in this community. We need you. We do. Again, we invite you to come tonight, Holy Spirit. We need you. Come and do whatever needs to be done in this meeting tonight. That Father, that we can leave here tonight better than we can. And Father, we'll give you praise for everything that's accomplished here tonight. Ask it in the mighty name, in the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. As I kneel in the darkness, in the middle of the night, I'm praying for assurance, everything's going 
gonna be alright. Jesus, isn't it just like our God to give you more than what you ask for? You get in a situation and you're praying for X, He delivers Y, Z, and He comes back around and brings you things you weren't even expecting. Isn't that good? We serve a great God tonight, folks. He deserves praise. Come on, give Him some praise in the house tonight. He deserves it. He's good to us. He gives us more than we ever need. None of us are starving. None of us are homeless. None of us have a place, not a place to sleep tonight. Nobody doesn't have any family around them tonight. you got a whole church full of brothers and sisters that love you tonight. Amen. God is good to us. And He deserves praise in His house. Sing that verse again. Talking to the Father in a house that was once a home. She said, my views are too
now that you're full of love beyond measure, words gonna fall like a stream in the desert, and soon all of this world will see living water is found in me because you come to the way. Sooner or later. Amen. Hmm? Amen. Has he been faithful to you? Amen. Has he been faithful to me? Yes. Amen. He's a God that is still able to do the exceeding, the abundant, the above all. Amen. And we can ask of that. Amen. He's still the same God. That's right. Still the same God that Paul talked about a little bit. Still the same God. Amen. Amen. God is good. Amen. God is good. All right, let's go downstairs. We'll go downstairs. Let's go. We'll get started. Amen. Well, I saw just going downstairs. Well, we'll probably just be dismissed. That's right. If Sonia's going down there, we'll probably be dismissed. That's right. If Sonia's going down there, we'll probably be dismissed. Oh, she did her. Hey, Brian. Brian's up. He's in the upper room. <laughs> All right. Let's go to, uh, I'm going to be in Colossians, chapter 1 and chapter 2. I'm going to be in Ephesians. I'm going to be in John 14 and John 16. I'm going to go from Genesis to Revelation. 
in a matter of 45 minutes. Not really. But I will be in Colossians, Ephesians, John 14, John 16. Uh, very familiar scriptures. It, it, uh, I'm not going to tell you anything you probably don't already know tonight. So, but I am going to rekindle some things. I am going to recap some things. To stir some things back up in our thinking. Amen. It got good. Amen. I said it got good. Amen. Amen. All right, tonight, for the next little while, we're going to talk about the believer's authority. The believer's authority. Breaking the power of the devil. The believer's authority. How many of you believe that we're living, really, a lot of times we're living in spiritual poverty? Amen. How many of you believe that? We, 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 we're just, we're, we're cheating ourselves of where we are, can be, rather, opposed to where we are, because we, we do not capitalize on God's word, his intended instruction for us to live a victorious life. So let's look at it. And we talk about the believer's authority breaking the power of the devil. Amen. Now the first thing that I want you to get is this. It's on the screen right off the bat. Here's what I want you to grab. Right, right, right real quick. It is our warfare with the enemy Always should be with the consciousness that we have authority over him. Any battle you face, any hardship you're going through, whatever battle you are facing right now, and I can go around and get many different answers right now because most of us are facing something right now. But every battle, every struggle you enter into, you, you must enter into it with the consciousness that you have authority over the enemy. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen. Okay. All right. Watch now. What? What? And the reason, the reason that, we, that we must have a consciousness that we have authority over him is because we all know that he is already a defeated foe. Right. Jesus has defeated Satan for us. For this purpose, the Bible says, for this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that He might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus has destroyed the works of the devil. You should never go into a battle thinking you're going to be the victim in this battle. Whether you realize it or not, you are the victor. You are not the victim. But our problem is, many times we enter into the battle with the mindset that we're defeated before we ever get started. Because of our attitude, because of our, 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 our neglect of the Word of God, our neglect of who we are in Christ, I'm telling you, the enemy is already defeated. Jesus has already defeated the enemy for us. We are in a place of victory. We're not fighting for victory. We're in a place of victory. And many times we enter into the battle. We enter into the, the things that we're facing with the mentality that, that, we are, that we are the victim when we are the victor. The Bible says that you and I are the head and not the tail. We are above only and not beneath. We're blessed in our going out and blessed in our coming in. This Bible declares in Romans chapter 8 verse 37, the Bible declares that, that I am more than a conqueror through Christ who loved me. Paul said this, Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Do you really believe that? You know that, but do you really believe that? 
Do you really have the reality of that verse? Do you really, uh, do you really possess the reality of what you are saying when you say those verses? Every one of us know those verses. I am more than a conqueror. We've said that a hundred thousand times. But do you really have the reality of that verse living on the inside of you? Are you really more than a conqueror? I'm telling you, you are in Jesus' name. I say you are in Jesus' name. You are more than a conqueror. You are, if God be for us, who can be against us? We are not the victim. We are the victor in Jesus' name. Amen. And I need to tell somebody one more time on the screen that the battle belongs to the Lord. Right. The victory is yours, but the battle belongs yeah. to God Almighty. Right. I said the battle belongs to the Lord. David, when he went out to face the giant, he realized one thing, the battle wasn't his. He looked at that uncircumcised, uncircumcised Philistine and he said, who are you to talk the armies of the living God? Who, are, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? And when he got out there to face the battle in the midst of the battle to face the giant, he made it very plain. This battle's not mine. This battle belongs to the Lord. I don't know who I'm talking to in this building, where you're sitting at right now, but the battle you're facing right now, it don't belong to you. Let me tell you what belongs to you. The victory belongs to you. The battle doesn't belong to you. But the victory does. I said, but the victory does. I said, but the victory does. I said, but the victory does. Some of you need to look back where you came from to see where you are right now. And the same God that got you through the last battle is the same God that will get you through this battle if you'll let the Lord fight the battle for you. If you'll hold your peace, he'll fight your battle. Oh, God, right there, there right on time, right there. If you'll hold your peace, you'll fight the battle. And he'll win the battle. You haven't lost one yet. And it's not about to start with you. Can't get an amen. amen. The battle is the Lord's. Yeah, but the victory belongs to you. How do you know that, preacher? Second, Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Paul said, Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Somebody ought to say amen right there. Amen. That word always is the big word. But he always causes you to try him. I said he always causes you to try him. I said he always causes you to try him. Always. Even in the midst of the layoff, he causes you to try him. Yeah. Always does. Always. But thanks be unto God. I wonder how many times we throw that in the devil's face every battle we face. I wonder what, what kind of difference it would make if we would start doing that. Amen. Amen. Okay, preacher. <laughs> we start the battle. We just begin to pull the word out. I say, look here, devil. Look what I found right here in 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Look what I found right here in chapter 2, verse 14. But thanks be unto God who always gives us, who always, always, always calls us to triumph in Christ. I wonder what kind. I wonder if we would just lay that right on the table, right, right when we start the battle. I wonder what kind of difference that would make if we would just continue to remind the devil of that. <laughs> I may not. I may not look victorious, but I am. I may be down right now, but you come on back in the morning. Come on, somebody. He always causes us to try him. I'm talking about the believer's authority. I'm talking about breaking the power of the devil. I'm talking about defeating the end before you ever get your foot holding in your life. Can somebody, is anybody listening to me? Amen. Now one more time. One more time. This scripture, this scripture here, been in this house for 100,000 years. <laughs> we ain't been that long. It seems like it. It seems like been that long. The Bible reveals where our warfare is and to whom it is with. This scripture has been here for the last three or four Wednesdays. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 12. Paul said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. The battle's not against one another. Right. Right. Amen. The battle's not against your husband or your wife or your fellow or your, or your brother or your sister right. in Christ. Right. For our warfare, our battle, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, in heavenly places. Right there is where our warfare is, and that is who our warfare is with. It is not with one another. So stop arguing. That's good. <laughs> stop fussing. You're, you're, the warfare is not you. It's not against you. So stop it. There's where your battle 
us at. There's where your warfare is. There's where you there's where you're wrestling against. The enemy's just caused you to wrestle against one another. Right. Stop it! It's not against one another. You have authority over that. Stop it. The battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. He'll cause you to triumph always if you know how to fight the battle. If you know how to war the warfare, you'll come out victorious. Amen. Now there's where our warfare is and there is to whom it's with. Watch now. But the Bible also tells us that those principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. This Bible also tells us that these demons and these evil spirits have been dethroned by Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 2 verse 15. Here it is on the screen. And having spoiled, disarmed principalities and powers, he, Jesus, made a show of them openly, putting them to public saying a bold display triumphing over them in it, it being the cross. Having spoiled principalities and powers, Jesus made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in the cross. Do you got me? Do you have that? The battle that you're fighting with the enemy that you're fighting, they have already been defeated. You're fighting from a place of victory. God, man. Amen. You're not fighting for a place of it. You're fighting for you, the, the victory's already been won, man. Right. And Jesus always will cause you to triumph when you understand how to fight the war fair. Right. Listen to me. So now, so now we our our, our, our contact. With these demons and these evil spirits should be with the knowledge that Jesus has dethroned them, Jesus spoiled them, Jesus put them to naught, Jesus paralyzed them. Amen. If whatever you're facing right now, if you would face those from the from the vantage point of knowing. That what you're up against right now, the spirit that's battling you has already been defeated. What kind of difference will that make right now? What's your face? If you really believe that. Or if you don't believe that, you don't believe the word of God. Because it's going to show you enough scripture here to back up what I've said. We spend too much time trying to fight for victory when we're, when we're fighting from a place of victory. We fail to see where we are, our position of not only where we are, but who we are. And many times, too many times, the enemy blinds us as to as our spiritual standing as to where we are far above all principalities, power, dominion, and might. And we try to fight the battle down here when our position is up here. And we end up trying to fight a place of victory when the victory's already been won. Amen. If we would just learn how to let the Lord fight the battle yes. and we hold our peace, yes. Amen. the scripture says he'll fight the battle for you. Amen. If you learn how to hold your peace. I'll preach on the preacher. Okay, I want to. Can I go a little bit more? Yeah. You don't want me to turn you loose right now because you don't, you don't think I've done back if I do that. Listen. One more time. Listen to me, sir. Listen to me. You should never go into the battle thinking that you're going to be the victim Come on. Come on. in this battle. I don't care what it looks like. I, I, I don't care what it feels like. You should never 
go into the battle with the mentality that you're going to be the victim. Because you're the victor. Through Christ, man. Through Christ, you're the victor. Hallelujah. Satan had the right to rule you at one time. Until you became a new creature in Christ. Amen. Until you was adopted in the body of Christ. Until you became accepted in the blood. He had a right. He had a right to be in your life. He had a right to rule your life. But the day that you got born again. Hallelujah. I said the day you got born again. Amen. Therefore if any man be in Christ. He's a new creature. He's a new species. Old things have passed away. And behold all things have become new. See he had a right to be in your life. He had a right to rule you at one time. Before you were born again. But he does not have the right to rule your life after you've been born again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 and through verse 14. Giving thanks to the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life. The word hath, is it past tense? No. <laughs> Matthew, would you help me about it? Is the word hath, is it a past tense word? Matthew, help me. Is it past tense? So, hey, I can't hear you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Past tense. That means he's already done. He's already made us partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Thank you, Jesus. I'll be the only one. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Give me your next verse. Who hath, Matthew, is the word hath past tense? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath, Matthew, is the word hath, is it past tense? Absolutely. Thank you. And hath delivered, translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. He's already did that. Yeah. Right. Now, before that happened, Satan had a right to rule in your life. But after that happened, he no longer has a right to rule in your life because you have been, you have been trans translated into the kingdom of God's Son. You've been, you, have, you, you, you have been delivered from the power of darkness and you've been translated into the kingdom of God's Son. Amen. Hallelujah. Next verse, Martin, here we go. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Can I get an amen from somebody? Amen. So now we have authority now. Somebody say now. now. We have authority now. In an hour that seems everywhere you look and everywhere you turn, there's adversity, there's chaos, there's confusion, there's fear, there's, there, 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 there's everything going on that can be going on this hour. But we have authority now in an hour when it seems like there is no authority. Wow. We have it now. You ought to thank God you got it now, especially the hour that we're living in right now. We are living in perilous times. The are, these are the last of the last days. And we still have the authority even in the last of the last days. Hallelujah. Amen. Still have authority. We have authority now. Somebody say now. Now. I have authority. I have authority. Okay. All right. You said, you said that like you meant it, like you believe it. Yeah. I'm going to act like you did, all right? Now, if we, were, if we were of the world, then I would say, yes, we should be all those things and more. We should be fearful. We should be, we should be for, full of worry. We should be full of anxieties and all of that. But we are not of the world. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. And so, therefore, we do not submit to the authority of the one who is the God of this world. Our authority comes from a higher authority. Our kingdom is not of the kingdom of this world. Hallelujah. Our authority on the screen. Our authority comes from one who's, who has absolute authority and that is Jesus Christ the son of the living God hallelujah Amen. there's where authority comes from there's where it comes from our kingdom is not of the kingdom of this world we belong to a different kingdom we're in this world but we're not of this world you're just a pilgrim passing through glory to God hallelujah 
either waiting on the grave or waiting on the trumpet to sound, Lord. And one way or the other, we just a pilgrim passing through, and the best is yet to come. We have authority now because right there is where our authority comes from. The one who, abs who has absolute authority. Yes. The son of the living God who conquered hell, death, and the grave. Come on, somebody. Amen. Very familiar scripture, Luke chapter 10, verse number 19. Let me do, I'm go back and recap some of these scriptures. Get to you again. Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power. In the Greek translated, authority. Behold, I give unto you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions. That, my friend, is evil spirits. That, my friend, is the kingdom of darkness. That right there it is. You have authority. Jesus said, Behold, I give you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power, translated ability, over all the ability of the enemy, and nothing by any means, any means, shall hurt you. Hey, look at me. That's what Jesus has given you. He didn't give it to the preachers only. He gave it to every, everyone that will confess him as Lord of their life. You have authority now. Behold, I give unto you authority to tread on scorpions, to, to, to tread on serpents and scorpions. And over all the ability of the enemy. The enemy has no ability over you. He has no authority over you. Jesus gave you power. All the power. Somebody say all. all. If all don't mean all, what does all mean? Hey, I'm talking about the believer's authority. I'm talking about, I'm talking about how to break the power of the devil. When you realize the authority that you have. And he'll stay as long as you let him stay at your house. He'll stay. But you don't go and put him out. Uh, preach on, preach on. Okay, I believe I will. Okay, next scripture. Matthew chapter number 28, verse 18. Jesus said, all. Somebody say all. All, all power, all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. earth. Again, if all don't mean all, what does all mean? All the authority that can be exercised upon the earth, watch me, has to be exercised through the church. Why? Because Christ is not here in person, his physical body. We are his body. We are his body. You are his body. And he has given his authority on earth to his body, the church. He's given it to you. He's given it to you. And given it to you. And given it to you. He's given us the authority. We are his body on this earth. And he's given us all authority on this earth. Hallelujah. And he wants us to occupy till he come. Glory to God. He wants you to lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. He wants you to cast out devils. Glory to God. Yes, sir. He wants you to do these things that will, that, that, that will bring the man manifestation of his power to this earth because you have been given the authority in his name on this earth to carry on what he left undone. Amen. Hallelujah. Preach on, preacher. Can I get an amen? amen. Can I get an amen? amen. Hallelujah. I know y'all think I'm crazy and I am crazy. But now listen, 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 listen. Many of our problems, and I'm going to say ours. Let me just say mine. Many, that way I won't make y'all mad. Many of my problems exist because I permit them to. See, I'm preaching to myself now. Y'all said amen about that. We'd say amen if I said y'all. Come on. Come on, man. I'm going to reverse it right now. Many of our problems exist because we permit them to exist. We tolerate them. We don't. We tolerate We just put up with it. And, and, and the reason we, we permit them is because, is because we're not doing anything about them. And we're the ones supposed to be doing something about them. But we're trying to get someone else, <laughs> including God, hallelujah, to do something about that, this and the other. And he has given you the authority to do something about this, that, or the other. We're waiting on him, he's waiting on you, he ain't. I give you the authority, you do. 
And we're waiting on him to do it. And he'll wait on you to use what he's given you to do it. Preach on, preacher. I go, I, well, I, I, I just get, I just, I just, I get them our women to pray for me. I get that their preacher to pray for me. Get that devil off my back. You get the devil off your back. You put him under your feet, that's where he belongs. You have the authority. You've been delegated the authority in Jesus' name. He's been given a name above every name. If you can put a name on it, he's above that name, glory to God. Every attack of the devil, you put a name on he's above that name. Hallelujah. Open the door and put him out. Shut the door and keep the devil out. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. Yes, sir. We tolerate that too much. We allow him to hang around too long. Amen. And he'll stay as long as you allow him to stay. As right. long as you help him, he'll stay. Amen. You can help him or you can put him out, whatever you want to do. Amen. Amen. Now, as a believer, somebody say, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Do you know that you have certain spiritual rights? Okay, that went over good. <laughs> and many times you have to stand, watch me, stand, yes. and demand your rights. Yeah. Yeah. There's a scripture in Matthew 11 and 12, just shut that down, Matthew 11 and 12, you go home and read it. And it says this, Jesus said, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, watch me, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. Sometimes you've got to take what is yours. That's right. Amen. 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 That's right. Come on. The kingdom of heaven will suffer violence if you don't take it. Amen. Because sometimes the violent take it. Sometimes you just got to get radical. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to get bold. Yeah. What? Well, Oh, we won't talk about feelings. I'm going to talk about feelings in a minute. I'm going to, I'm going to talk about feelings in a minute. Just give me a little time. Don't rush me. Now, see, you done got me messed up, and I've got what I'm saying. I have to start all back over. Let's start all back up again. Matthew is half a past this word. Are you with me? I said, are, are, you, are, are you with me? We as believers have spiritual rights. And sometimes you have to stand and demand your rights. Listen to me now. You are, to, you are not demanding of God when you demand your rights. You're demanding of the devil. That's right. Amen. Hey, with me. Come on. Notice the comparison. Look at this now. John chapter 14. Let me get over here. John chapter 14. Verse 13 and verse 14. Notice, notice the comparison there. Watch. John chapter 14, verse 13. John 14, verse 13. Watch that. Watch. Watch. And whatsoever you shall ask. In the Greek, that word ask is translated demand. Boy, that don't go over good, does it? Oh. And whatsoever you shall demand in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask, if you demand anything in my name, I will do it. I will do it. Amen. Watch now. Look at that. Look at that. It's a demand of something due. Grab that. He's talking about a demand of something due. D U E. Do you? You have spiritual rights. When he speaks about when he speaks about demanding, what's up? You shall demand in my name. He's talking about something that is due. Do you understand that healing is due you as a spirit? You do, do, do. Okay. Okay. I just I had to throw that in there. Do do, 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 do do you know that liberty, freedom is your spiritual right? Peace yes. yeah. is, is your spiritual right. Mm -hmm. 
Joy in the Holy Ghost is your. Yeah. I, I'm just, just, just kind of talking to you just a little bit, just kind of give you an idea of what, what Jesus is talking about. What's that? Watch this. Watch, 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 watch. Look at this scripture right here. Because watch me down. Because he's not talking about prayer. He don't talk about prayer right there now. You can you, you can check it out on your own. He's not talking about prayer. He's talking about demand something, a demand like you know about a demand of, of something due. Watch me now. What? What? He's not talking about prayer. Now John six chapter sixteen. What? Now he's talking about prayer in verse twenty three and twenty four. Let me show you this because I'm going to show I'm going to show you the comparison. John 16, verse 23, and verse 24, verse 23. And in that day you shall ask, you shall ask me nothing. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto you, up to now you have asked nothing in my name, ask, and you shall receive that your joy may be, may be full. Watch me, look at this. Now he's talking about prayer. See, the Father is mentioned here in connection with prayer. But he isn't mentioned in John 14 that we just read in, in a matter of prayer. Watch me. Watch, 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 watch. Look, look, look on the screen. See, in John chapter 14, verse 13, we just read, the Greek actually, it's on the screen, actually reads, whatever you demand as your rights and privileges, whatever you demand as your rights and privileges, he's, you are demanding as something due. Look at me. Watch me. I'm telling you, the devil will strip you of all your rights. Amen. If you don't get bold enough Amen. and stand against the evil one and demand what is rightfully yours. Amen. But talk to me somebody. Come on, man. Talk to the preacher. Come on, man. That's why when the enemy begins, man, listen. Listen. That's where the power of agreement comes in. That's when two people can grab hand, buddy, and bind the devil just that quick, man. That's when a husband and wife, when, 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 when they're facing trouble and, and all hell is breaking loose, that's when they need to grab hand, brother, and stand on the word of God, come in agreement of prayer, and, and the power of agreement will come, and you demand your rights as a child of God, and bind the works of the devil, and bind everything that he's doing in your home and in your marriage in Jesus' name. You bind it. You you demand something due because it's your rights. It's your you have privileges and rights as children of God, as men and women of God. We have rights, and the devil will strip you of your rights if you let him. He'll take every privilege you have as as, as a king's kid. He'll, he'll take all your privilege if you let him. You go to bed miserable, get up miserable. And nothing God can do because He's given you the authority to do it. But here's the problem. For you to claim the manual rights, you've got to know what your rights are. Amen. I feel so good to have done that. Amen. That's why these old dead Wednesday night prayer meeting nights are, you know, are so important, I guess. Because you begin to learn your you begin to learn rights. You begin to learn, to, begin to hear your privilege. You begin to learn Amen. about your rights, what you have as a child of God, right. what is rightfully yours. And now you can understand that. Now you can stand and demand your rights and privileges. Right. Amen. 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 Come on, preacher. Preach on. I'm going to. I'm going to preach a little bit more. Can I go a little bit more? Yeah. Can I go a little bit more? Yeah. Right, now watch that. Watch, watch this. Watch, 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 watch. Get this. Get this. Watch. See, when you, when, when you find out your rights and your privileges, what you can expect once you have demanded remember on the screen, you're not demanding God, you're demanding your God given rights it's a demand of something due you're demanding the devil and once you do that once you, listen, once you, once you, once you do this, watch me now what? once you do this once you, once you, once you realize what your rights and privileges are and you demand, you're, now you're demanding what is rightfully yours. You're not demanding God now. Don't you, don't, you say, don't you dare do that. I didn't say that. I said you're demanding of the devil. Because he's taking your privileges and your rights. This, this demand is, is about something due. Something that's due you. 
your rights and your privileges. It's still you. Watch me. Once you, once you have done this, once you, once you have done this, now watch now, watch now. Now comes something else. Now, faith, yeah, I know I miss you. Faith now has to be, has to be involved in exercising your spiritual authority. Somebody say, faith, faith. has to be involved faith. in my spiritual authority. Now, I've got to get some faith going now. Watch me. I don't I do, I do, I do, I do demand it now. Now, 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 faith, faith, faith now. Faith, faith, faith now. Faith now has to be involved in exercising my spiritual authority. Watch now. Watch, watch. And your, your faith has to be based on the Word of God. What did God say? The rights and privileges has to be based on the Word of God. Yeah. See, God knows what your rights are yeah. and your privileges are and what you demand. <laughs> now, faith has to be involved. Now, faith gets involved in, in exercising spiritual authority. Watch that. Why? See, the Bible says in Romans 10, 17, the Bible says, Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. See, you can sit here, hear the word, and faith comes. You can't stop faith. Faith comes. You can't stop it. You can read the word out loud, and faith will come. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Watch now. Watch. See, now faith gets involved now. I've stood I've demanded my spiritual right. I have rights and privileges. Faith now gets involved. Faith comes about here, and I've heard now my right. I heard my privilege. Now, now faith has got involved in the exercise. Now I've got faith involved. Faith comes about hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now faith gets involved, and faith opens the door to God's promise. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Come on. Come on, Pastor. Whoops. Faith opens the door to God's promise. I'd wake that car going to come down the hill. Faith opens the door to God's promise. Oh, that going? That's it, just like a bunch of Christians can't keep the faith door open. Faith opens the door to God's promise. Yes, amen. That burning? That's just like a bunch of Christians. <laughs> Romans 10, 17, faith cometh by. Hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36. Watch me. Watch. Let me back up verse 35. Cast not away therefore your confidence, confidence which has a great recompense of. For you have need of. Oh God, y'all got me now. Y'all heard that. For you have need of. Patience, and after you've done the will of God, that you might receive the promise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Faith opens the door to the promises of God. Patience keeps the door open until the promise is fulfilled. Boy, I tell you something right, right there, worth my trip to the house of God. Patience is what will keep the door of faith open. Patience is, is, is remaining the same, remaining constant. You're the same going into this thing as you are coming out of this thing, glory to God. You're not changed by what you see. You're not changed by what you feel. You're not changed because the job didn't come today. You're not changed because you got a bad report yesterday. It doesn't change. I take faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. By his stripes I am healed. I don't care what the report says. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And patience will keep the door open, glory to God. Faith will open the door, but patience will keep it open. Until the promise of God yeah, is fulfilled. Yeah. Preach on, preacher. Faith gets involved now. Patience. Patience has got to come now. Because now, 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 now. For I have need of patience. Because patience is what will keep the door of faith open until the promise of God is fulfilled. 
what you demand, your spiritual right, your spiritual privileges may not come overnight. But do you have enough faith and patience till it does show up? Well, I have faith, preacher. Well, I'm glad you do, because God gave you a measure of faith. You ought to have you got faith. Don't say you ain't got none because you have. But the question is, do you have enough patience when you don't all understand to stand there for until the promise shows up? Hallelujah. Not going to let the devil rape and plunder. Not going to let the devil take my victory. Not going to let the devil take my... I'm not the... No, 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 devil. No, I'm not the victim in this thing. No, you're the victim. You're the dirty dog. Not me. No, I am the victor in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You're already defeated, though. Jesus has already stripped you of your power. You have no power on me. You have no authority on me. In Jesus' name, you don't. I demand you to go now in the name of Jesus, and I'll outlast you, devil. You see, the devil's a short time fighter. He is. He'll just jab and win. He'll come back. He hits quick and goes. He just hits you with enough to get you all messed up. Yeah, come on, preacher. Come on, you bunch of rednecks out there. Talk to this preacher. Come on. Now, you know I'm telling you the truth. He'll slap you right quick and run. He'll be back in the morning when you get up to slap you again. He's a short time fighter. That's why patience. You got to listen. You got to outlast the devil, man. Yes. You got to stay longer than he wants to stay. Amen. Yes. <laughs> and I, can I say this without getting in trouble? Brian, you may have to bleep this one out. Gotcha. Probably ought to just shut it down. Shut the tape down because I'm going to say a word here that won't stop her ears up. You're on pause. Go ahead. Sometimes you just have to give the devil hell. You have to give him what he's full of. If he's going to hang around, give him hell. Amen. Come on, somebody talk to me. Yeah, you ought to have praise. You ought to have praise for you. Glory to God. Every time he's over there, he say, thank God, thank God. But thanks be in the God. Oh, who always calls us to triumph in Christ. You ought to just have a praise for you, glory to God. Right in the middle of a bad report. Right in the middle of a fuss and argument. You ought to just grab one another's hand and just go to praising God. Hallelujah. Just go through the house of praising God for everything you see. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Open the fridge right up. Just go to praising God for everything you see in the fridge right up. Go out in the driveway and have a praise fit, glory to God. Get the devil hell for sure. Yeah. You show my place, you're going to pay for going to my place. Yeah. I'm going to pray God to midnight. And if you're still here, I'm going to go to 2 o'clock in the morning. If you're still 2 a.m., I'm going to go to 4 a.m. And I'm going to have a praise, yeah. thanksgiving yeah. fit on you because you're here. And I'm going to run you a little devil off. Yeah, amen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, that's part, that's part of patience. Mm -hmm. That's part of outlasting the devil. Yeah. i got to quit this, man. I'm going to waste all my time talking to y'all now. <laughs> Am I making any sense? Yeah, amen. I believe mean, y'all just trying to make me feel good. Got me? Amen. Watch that. What? 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 Most people, watch me, <coughs> they base their faith on manifestations. Yeah. If you get a certain manifestation, they think the devil's gone. Amen. Uh -huh. Come on. If they fall out, if they jerk, if they run, if they shake, if they dance on one leg, dance on two legs, <laughs> play a fast song, slow song. <laughs> they base their faith on manifestations or circumstances. When they don't change immediately, they become discouraged. Amen. They begin to talk doubt yes. and unbelief. <laughs> and, they give them, and they give the devil dominion over them. They, gave, they give him a place of opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. And the Bible says give him no place of opportunity. Give him no seed of opportunity. Watch me. Come on. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. I love what old Smith Wigglesworth. You ever get a chance to read his biography? You ought to read it. He often said, Smith would say, I'm not moved by what I see. And not moved by what I feel. I'm moved only by what I believe. Wow. I like that. Yeah. Amen. I like that. Amen. 
Well, how you feel, preacher? Well, you let, let, ask me. Ask me what I believe. <laughs> let me tell you what I believe. Because I might not feel real good. I might not feel real safe either. So you better stand back just a little bit because I might be <laughs> Ask me what I believe, or I'm gonna tell you what I believe. You can't be moved by what you see. You can't be moved by what you feel. Faith sometimes rises and falls by manifestations of what we see and what we hear. Come on, somebody. Come on. And Satan will do everything he can to keep you from becoming convinced of your authority. And if he can make you think your authority is in a feeling, if he can make you believe that your authority is a feeling, then he'll keep you from acting when you're not feeling confident. Preach on preaching. Let me ask you something. When you're depressed... Do you feel like you have any authority? No. Why puke? No. Oh. <laughs> when you're discouraged, do you feel like you have any authority? No. Come on, talk to me, somebody. No. And the devil, the devil, the devil, he makes you, he convinces you that you have no authority because of the way you feel. Right. Well, what's that got to do with anything? You don't have no authority because you're not using your authority. You know, waiter, quit it. <laughs> Get out of you big baby. Shut that up. Get some boldness about you. Slap the devil upside the head. <coughs> Let him know he's in a battle. He comes to your house. You know a little bit more than that down the road. He can't go that down the road that there. He don't know nothing. <laughs> Talk to me. Oh, y'all don't, y'all, y'all, y'all sit there and act like y'all, y'all, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Amen. <coughs> Every one of us. Yeah. Because many times we allow the enemy to convince us we don't have any authority because of the way we feel. Right. Or what we see or what we hear. Yeah. And that ain't got a doggone thing to do with what's already been given you. Right. Yeah. Amen. Come on. <coughs> but we let the enemy convince us we have no authority. And you're living like you have no authority. Wow. You're living defeated. That's right. Because you're not demanding your spiritual rights and your privileges. Mm -hmm. Amen, preacher. Mm -hmm. Amen, preacher. Amen. 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 That authority is yours whether you feel like it or you don't feel like it. Right. Right. Amen. 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 Authority has nothing to do with your feelings. But it has everything to do with Jesus and what yeah, He's done. Amen. <laughs> amen. But you've got to exercise your authority. Right. Or you can let the devil just come in and do what he wants. Right. Amen. Amen. amen, preacher. Amen. Can I go a little bit more? Yeah. Well, it ain't but 8 30. You go go home, just watch that one eyed devil. Just think him be for a little while. Amen. You'll sleep better. I keep here at bedtime. Watch me now. Our spiritual authority is legal and it is actual. It is a legal thing for you and it is an actual thing for you. <coughs> when I ask people if they're married, I never hear them say, well, I'm not sure. <laughs> sometimes I feel married and sometimes I just don't know. <laughs> they always say yes or no. Yes, they do. And, 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 and they always give you an answer, yes or no. And if we are married, we are totally convinced of it all the time. Amen. And we have a legal document to prove it. Amen. Feelings and thoughts and personalities and sight doesn't change the reality of that legal arrangement. Oh, preach on, preacher. Our spiritual authority is just as real and it's just as actual as the marriage document. Come on, somebody. And we cannot allow what we see, what we feel, 
to alter what God has said in His Word. You can't be moved by what you see, and you can't be moved by what you feel. We tried it. Wow, what does Paul say? Let me, let me get this scripture in. It just come to me. Paul said, <laughs> While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are subject to change. Subject to change. Subject to change. Hallelujah. The things which are seen are temporal. They're subject to change. Subject to change. Subject to change. Subject to change. But the things which are not seen are eternal. We can't let our feelings move us out of our authority. And yet we do. Yeah. Yes, we do. All of us at one time or another. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, I got time. Our rights and privileges have to be based on the word. Faith has to be based on the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay? Now watch, 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 watch. So now, so now the word, we go back to the word. So now the word, the word now, has a direct bearing on our spiritual authority. The word of God has a direct bearing. You can't demand your privilege if you don't know your privilege. That's right. That's good. You can't. You can't demand your rights if you don't know your rights. Right. Amen. So the Word of God now is very important because the Word now has a bearing on our spiritual authority. If we don't know the Word, I said if we don't know the Word, and if we do know the Word and don't use the Word, we're worse off by not knowing the Word. Preach on, preacher. Amen. Because now you're going to be held accountable for what you know. I believe the Lord will help us in our ignorance by the things we don't know. But the things we do know and don't use and don't demand what we do know. Well, I'll leave that alone. <laughs> I'm not filling the blank. I'd like to, but I won't. Because it'll be my opinion. I don't know what Are you with me? Okay, watch me now. Can I go a little bit more? How the word now becomes important. The word now is a direct bearing on our spiritual authority. It does. The word. The word. The word, man. Watch this. Watch. 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 Let me show you the importance points of the word pertaining to our authority. The Bible says concerning the ministry of Jesus that he cast out spirits with his word. And he also cast him out by the Spirit of God, by the Holy Ghost. Matthew chapter 8, verse 16. Watch it. Watch how, watch how important the word is. When the evening was come, they brought unto him, brought unto Jesus many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word. with his what? Word. With his word. word and healed all that were sick. Watch now. The word. He cast them out. What's how important the word is now? Pertain to our spiritual authority. He cast, he cast those demons, those devils out with his with the word. Not only with that, also with the word, but also by the Spirit of God. All right, watch now. What? 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 He's speaking. It, it wasn't just the word speaking apart from from the Spirit of God. Acts chapter ten, verse thirty-eight. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. It wasn't. It wasn't just the word speaking apart from from the Spirit of God. So we need the Word and we need the Holy Spirit, both working together, because we must depend on the Holy Spirit to help us in ministry. Watch me, our authority, because you have the Helper on the inside of you. The Holy Spirit has been sent as your Helper, not the one to do it. Look at me. He's your Helper. 
He will help you as you take your authority. He will not take your authority for you. You have to take your own authority because it's been given to you. And the Holy Spirit and the Word, the Word and the Holy Spirit will help you, will help you gain your authority. Come on, man. That, that's better than what y'all like. That, that better, you, that's better than what you're letting on it in. When you learn how to depend on your helper. If we'll study the Word of God, if we'll clothe ourselves in, 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 in His teaching and authority, I'm telling you folks, it'll work for us. The Word will work if you'll work it. I said the word will work if, if you'll work it. Amen. If we, if, we, if we try to act on God's word without really having that word build up in our spirit, watch me, then the devil will defeat us. Amen. Because we don't possess the reality of what we're saying. Oh, come on, man. We, we, you, you, you've got to go to the next step besides confessing. You've got to, you've got to possess the reality of what you're confessing. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't profess the reality of what you're confessing, all you're confessing is words, right. and it means nothing. That's right. And the enemy will take advantage of that. I go to Acts and prove that to the seven sons of Stephen. The evil spirit said, "Paul, we Jesus, we know Paul, we know, but who are you?" Yeah. In other words, that demon spirit wanted to know if this bird knew who he was. In Christ. <laughs> Before I jump on you, I'm going to find out what you've done. Because if you know, if you know Jesus, I, 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 I'm going to have to leave. Mm -hmm. Watch me. Watch. Hey, with me. It's me now. I, I, stay with me. I'm losing some of you. I can tell me looking at you. You want to go home, watch gun smoke, gun smoke anymore at 9 o'clock. <laughs> watch me. Watch me. Watch, 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 watch. You have to have the foundation of the Word. Watch me. Watch, watch. You will only <laughs> defeat the devil when you have a foundation of God's Word and you act upon it. Amen. Period. Proof, okay? Proof's in the pudding. Matthew chapter 7. Here's the proof here right now. Matthew chapter 7, verse number, verse number 24. Jesus said, Therefore, whosoever heareth these saints of mine and doeth them who hears them and doeth them, do some. Jesus said, I like him a wise man. Mm -hmm. Build this house upon a rock. When the rain was hit, the floods came, the wind blew, beat upon that house, it fell not. Why? Because it found upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these things of mine and doeth them not, Jesus said, I like him a foolish man. He's a fool. We built this house upon the sand. When the rain was hit, the floods came, the wind blew, beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of him. Look at me. Look, 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 look. You will only defeat the devil when you've got a foundation of God's Word and you act upon it. You've got to have that foundation. The Word has got to be built up on the inside of you. The Word has got to be built up on the inside of you. When you take your stand, when you take your authority, you've got to have the Word to stand on. A preacher, I'm sleepy. I want to go home. Well, I'm going to let you go home in a minute. But first of all, I've got you to understand that you've got to have the foundation of the Word to back your authority up. Yeah. The devil's not afraid of you. He ain't afraid of me. He's afraid of the one on the inside of you. Especially if you've got a foundation of the Word built up on the inside of you and you can stand on the Word of God with boldness and demand your spiritual rights and demand your spiritual privileges. Oh, my. Or you can just let him walk on in and take what he wants. Yeah. Preach on, preach on. I got to quit. Can I give you this scripture? Amen. Can I? Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you very much. Okay. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8, first part of verse 9. Peter said, be sober, be vigilant. Why? Because your adversary the devil, as a royal line walking about, seeking whom he may devour. Then he said in the next verse, he said, who resist steadfast in the faith. Resist steadfast. In other words, withstand the enemy. Amplified says, withstand him. Be firm in faith against his onset. Rooted, established, strong, immovable, and determined. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Resist him. Patience, man. Resist him. Outlast the devil. Take your authority and stand your ground on the Word of God. Resist the devil. Yeah. Resist him. Resist steadfast in the faith. Amen. I'm going to take it on the screen because your level of faith is directly 
related to the degree of God's word dwelling in your heart. Now talk about the word that is reality to you of which you daily walking in. I tell you, oh, uh, you get that right there. I, I could talk four to five minutes right there on that thing right there. Just on that little thing right there, I could talk four to five minutes right there. Look at this. Look at this. Your level of faith is directly related to the degree of God's word that is dwelling in you. The reality of the word that's in you, the word that you're walking in daily. And we're all on different levels. That's true. That's true, preacher. Huh. Okay. I can tell y'all the work. Y'all work on. Okay. We'll go on. You can only operate in what you know. You can only walk in what you know. Amen. What is reality to you, right? Amen. That's why church is important. I said that's why church is important. I said that's why church is it's so important. Amen. <laughs> Let me close with this statement because I really, I really don't close. I do. Here's what happens when we are not built up in the Word. It leaves an open door mm -hmm. for the devil. Because screen, we will never be able to deal with evil spirits as long as there's anything in us that the devil can touch. We will not. I'm going to say that again. We'll never be able to deal with these evil spirits as long as there's anything in you that the devil can touch. Amen. Before the devil can bring evil spirits against you, he has to have a door open. There has to be a sea of opportunity open to it. First John five eighteen, hurry on the screen. We know that whosoever born born of God saith not, but he that but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and the wicked one toucheth him not. So the question is, how does Satan get an opening? How does he get an opening? Here's the answer on the screen. When the believer ceases to seek holiness, and purity, and righteousness, and truth. And begin to give way to the carnal appetites. The door of opportunity now opens up for the enemy to come. Yeah. And you have no foundation for the word. Yeah. Am I making any sense? Yeah. I gotta hurry. I gotta hurry. I'm yeah. skipping over this. I gotta hurry. I'm just throwing it out there. If you get it, I hope and pray to God you. If you don't get it, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try, try, try to help you. He has an open door. And I'm gonna say it again on the screen. We cannot deal with evil spirits as long as there's anything in us the devil can touch. Can't do it. But the good news is, watch me, and I'm close with this, I promise you. The good news is, you and I can be so clean that the devil comes and he can find nothing in you. I said the good news is, that didn't go over good. You act like you didn't believe that. The good news is, that you and I can be so clean that the, when the devil comes, he can find nothing in you. John chapter 14, verse 30. Here it is. Jesus <laughs> said, Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of the world cometh and hath nothing in me. I'm going to say it again. Mm -hmm. We can be so clean that when the devil comes, he can find nothing in you. Jesus said, the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. The Amplified, I like the Amplified. Amplified Classic said, I will not talk with you much more for the prince, evil genius, ruler of the world is coming. And he has no claim on me. He has nothing in common with me. There is nothing in me that belonged to him. He has no power over me. God, I like that. Amen. Amplified, I don't guess that was up there. Was it up there? Oh, Marta, she, she come up. Oh, there it is. Okay, I missed it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, no one. What, 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 what? Last day, don't scream, Lord, put it up there. If there's anything in me that belongs to Satan, then he has power over you. 
But there's nothing in me that belongs to him. If there's nothing in me that belongs to Satan, then he has no power. Amen. We can stand in the authority that we have been given. Amen, preacher. Okay, children. There's some of you will have to stay in for recess. Yep. You have been very <laughs> neglectful of hearing. Not really, I'm just kidding. I'm done. I'm done.